This is the German firing range. Dating back to the Second World War, this firing range was used until the early 1990s. To see part one of this three-part mini-series, click the card above or see the link in the description box. This is the butts of a range. Yeah. I don't think we've just come in from the firing point and this would have been a short 25 metre range for um, small arms. Yeah, pistols. Pistols, you yeah. dug it out for some reason. The... Uh, I suppose it's full of brass, isn't it? Yeah. So, some graffiti. I mean, some of it's quite good artwork. But you can see, going up there, that line, yeah, that's where the line of sand would have been. Absolutely. Um, you can see all the shots that have gone high. Oh yeah, people aiming way above the target. How way on earth, above. How on earth do you miss a target? Well, and the, and the simple answer is, if he was in the forces, not as a soldier, say as an admin clerk or something like that, yeah. once a year you had to go to the range and qualify to uh, be able to operate a weapon. And of course you might have sat behind a desk for 12 months and never seen one for the last you know, year. So you get out on the range and, and they're, they're not there to be soldiers, they're there to be admin clerks. Yeah. So... Yeah, there's some valuable graffiti, a bit random. Mm. Uh, and the frog that hadn't really made it, unfortunately. Yeah. You run out of water. Yeah. And then through this door, I believe, the range went on. And on and on. Oh, yeah, on. there's a. Yeah, there's another. Another uh, wall there. Looks like it was the backstop. Yeah. There's an aircraft there that's quite low. But we're not so, far from that Benlo Airport, are we? We're not, no. So we would expect that. Which yeah. way do you reckon is going to be the easiest to get down? There's another one there that looks... Another wall there that looks nearer. So these are the back of the firing ranges. Yeah. Uh, 25 metre range. And then they could come through to here, where there was larger ranges. Imagine being able to buy all this range of all that land. You could turn these buildings into your house and, and live in it. Yeah, It'd be I know. great. You'd have all this land to do what you wanted with. Absolutely. I forgot my tree beater. It's a bit... It's a bit... It's a bit brambly. A bit brambly. Oh, they're sharp as well. They are sharp. <laughs> Straight through my legs. Do you want me to go first and be the sacrificial anode? Try it. They are extra spiky though. They are spiky ones because the the fresh. Take that, you swine, you. Oh. Hey, there's actually blackberries on these. So we can have bramble pie. Yeah, so we're making our way to the firing point of the long distance range. Better? Yeah, this is a bit nicer, isn't it? There's a hut there to the left. What's that for? Little briefing huts. Briefing and weapons prep. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, there's a bag for a sand. Um, Heshamine bag there. And styrofoam. Yeah. Again, this doesn't look that old, does it? It doesn't look that old. No. It's modern plyboard. Yeah, that is quite modern. So we're just in a weapon prep area. Weapon prep and... So we've got more wheels on the wall there. Wrapping, roses. wrapping some form of piping round them, whatever they did with that. I don't know. Did he blow the barrels through with compressed air to clean them out, maybe? No, I've never done that. No, I haven't. I'm just wondering, right, if anybody knows what they're for, please leave a comment. Look, some of the electrics are still in. Pretty sure the light switch won't work.
Nice. Like Woodstock left behind. And that's just in the woods behind the range. I don't do um, prepared photographs, but I am going to move that tree just so you, the viewers, can see that sign. So there we have the sign for the firing range. We're going to go off to the firing area now. Yeah, so I think this is the firing point because it's slightly raised. Yes, it is. I've just felt myself going upwards. A bit yeah. bad, didn't we? Well, hey! <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, and there's like soft parts here yeah. that they maybe leant down against and fired down there. What are we thinking? This is like a thousand metre? I would think a so, a thousand metre range. range. Yeah. And you had your numbers. But if it's anything like our ranges, you could get up and move forwards and there would be another firing point further down. Yes. So you could practice at different distances. Obviously we don't want to be crawling through brambles and getting scratched to bits. This bit looks fairly well trodden, but I think we're going to be into the middle of a range here. Not, uh, yeah, yeah. This is a long range, is this? And these are just baffles. This is probably, uh, I don't know, well, it's, if that's 25 meter, the firing point would be way over the other side of that. 25, and however far it goes there. I don't want to go down that banking because I've got to get back up. Edges are above, so we're just going to look at getting to those. That could have possibly. Been... That could have possibly uh, 200 or 600 meter range even. Just a long range. This that's just a baffle. Yeah. Uh, and but there's another baffle there. High. If we come back out, Dave, and go back in further up, we can walk straight down. I've just looked on Google Maps. Yep. That looks like a. Probably 600 meter range that. Yeah, we'll walk down it. So we've got the elevation baffles there to stop the rounds going too high, yeah. which is that device there. So if you're firing down a range um, and you're not very good at shooting, and if, say, if they're a semi automatic weapon and they're in full auto and they go brrrr, and they start raising because the kick raises it, you end up firing up here. Um, and you don't, you want to be down here, so those. Those are catch baffles to catch anything going up high. And the thing is, if you if you're not experienced and you squeeze the trigger and the, the recoil of the weapon lifts the barrel, if you then get surprised by that and pull the trigger again while the weapon's in the air, then yeah. that's obviously why you've got the catch baffles. A hundred percent, yeah. yeah. See if we can get back in one of these. <laughs> very overgrown, as you can it is very there, overgrown. see. It is very overgrown. I think our friends with the airsoft weapons have left because they've heard us. I haven't heard any more. Up, 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 up. No, I haven't. I'll just walk to the end of this track and see how clear it is. Not very. We're just looking for the easiest way to get down there without crawling through brambles and undergrowth and things. It's not that bad actually. Nearly yeah, halfway so we're down. We're going to walk down along there to these butts, and then we're going to walk back down the range again. Yeah, we don't know how much of this range is uh, modern or, or from the Second World War era. Um, I mean, it's concrete construction and um, we, we know from all the bunkers and things that they had concrete construction in the Second World War so it's, it's fairly likely that it was. Yeah, there's a backstop. Oh yeah. So that'll be the, what, 500 metre backstop? Yeah. Yeah, that's them backstops, I can see them. Uh, we're about two thirds of the way there now, Dave. Yeah. Oh, we are not. Now then, coming up to the end of it now. Yes. This 
looks like it was the books for the range. Yes. Yeah, there's a wall section here. And then the building which looks like it could have been a workshop. So the the tag it would on frames and uh, obviously needs to be repaired and So we've been in one of these in the UK, haven't we Dave? Yeah we have. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got the outdoor area here where they could smoke cigarettes and things like that here. Oh, we've got the keyboard here. Can my German speaking friends translate that? Yeah. This is a storeroom, I would presume. Uh -huh. Yeah. Little store area. And this is where the sort of different ages are because we've got the concrete from the Second World War and then we've got wood from much newer. Um, probably the 60s or 70s. Drifting man. Asbestos roof. Yes. 70s, I would uh, Definitely looks, looks like Second World War era concrete. It does. Uh, with the rebar in it, the way that it's rusted and it's popping the concrete off. It looks just like the bunkers. It does. With the shuttered concrete. Yeah. The bunker in Oberhausen that looked very much like this. Some uh, here looks like outside toilets. These, these are the repair stickers for the targets and somebody stuck them on the wall to make names. That's what they are, they're the repair targets, uh, the target repair stickers where well, rounds gone through it, you just put a black sticker on it to make it good again. And a few people have done it. So there's been electrical distribution in here. So it makes me makes me think that they've uh, electrified the bolts, uh, you know, to make the targets go up and down. Do you think they've done that, Dave? What's that? Made the targets go up and down electrically. These holes here. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they probably did it by hand to start with. Somebody down here shoving the target up, pulling it down. But going by the bolt holes there, it looks like they did it pneumatically or electrically. Yeah. I can't see any pneumatics. No. But, um, but these stickers... Or, or they could have been, instead of going up and down, just turning targets. Yeah, rotate 90 just degrees. Just 90 degrees on an actuator. That would that would make more sense. So I think, I think these stickers are the repair stickers. They are. Yeah. yeah. So, so these are left by people who were down here. 24th, down in front of the map, like April, 24th of April, 82. Yeah, so that's when the range was still in use, I guess. Yeah, because these look like squadron markings. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, this, uh, I saw another one, 36, they're just random numbers. 61, 61ND, OGB. Their squadrons are the 92nd. Yeah. 50th, 50th, 1981. This is proper graffiti, this isn't just rubbish. Somebody's wrote a little thing on here though. Can any of my German speaking friends translate that? Oh, something on. 
regiment. Something on there as well. 35. Don't know what that says. This ice guy can't read German. Another one there. Or pencils. So they spent a long period of time down here to be bored. Mm. So we've got benches, operatives' benches. Uh, oh, that is sealed shut, but it looks like that was a telephone in there, but it's solid. 11.92. That's a person, FLG Kaiser. 1987, he was here. 1990. Unfortunately, the metal thieves have been and stripped all this out. As if this big switch works. Yep. If you used to work here, or you fight at these ranges, Please leave a comment. Exploring slug. Close that back up. You can see the block paving that's been overgrown. These are big bullet resistant doors back here. That's how thick they are. Yeah, and this would have been covered with sand. You can make out the where the sand was over there. That's where the sand was. And then the mechanically operated boats. There should be holes in the floor somewhere. Have you found the holes in the floor, Dave? Yeah. yeah. Where the targets were. I they think these were turning targets. Yeah, and then that's another turning target. Have you seen some of the strafes? There's been big caliper stuff here. Oh yeah, they have, yeah. This is like 50 cal. Yeah. They're big rounds coming in there. They're not rifle rounds, they're belt-fed machine gun rounds. They've been a bit off to the left. Yeah, yeah they've needed these baffles, haven't they? Yeah. Because some of them rounds have been real high. Yeah. Say again, over. Hmm? What are you looking at? I'm looking to see if there's any stray rounds up plot. Ah, okay. So, yeah, 5.56, by the looks of it. Yeah, can you see that, viewers? Just here, that's uh, 5.56 5, 5 round heavy, heavy um, rifle round. Yeah, the a lot of NATO forces hit a lot. I can't speak. A lot of NATO forces use 5.56 rounds. They were like the common There's ammunition. There's another. They're quite old. Old rounds, those. Yep. Good spot, Dave. Yeah. There will have been a lot of uh, metal detecting type people. Oh, of course there. there will, yeah, looking for souvenirs and things. It's probably where the sand's gone. I well, don't know why they'd remove the sand. To weigh the copper in. Yeah, just you dig imagine the sand how much copper and in. lead is in that. In they that dug it all there. away. Yeah. After years and years and years. Oh, it'd be toppers with it, oh, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be absolutely full of it. Full of it. Yeah. You can see how effective the sand is because the top part, the sand would have only been 30 centimetres thick, but. You can see where the sand's been and no rounds hit the wood. The sand stopped it every time. But 
but common with German engineering. It's absolutely solidly made. So there's a, a car wheel fixed to the wall there. What would that have been for? Um, good question. What would we use? So it's probably to store a hose. I don't think so, to wrap a hose around it, but whether it's an airline or uh, a water hose. What would you hose down? Um, me when I'm hot. Me, well, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just, not sure. If they just, I don't know. You see, the thing is, if you're sweeping the range, yeah, all the dust has got lead in it, so it's poisonous. It's not good. So they spray it down, so then you, sweep it. You damp it down and then sweep it up, I guess. So you don't sweep. So you're not sweeping yeah. powdered lead into the air and breathing it. That's a very valid point, Dave. Yeah. So, just stand there, mate. We'll do a catch in this. Uh, just do a pause. <laughs> Caption that, viewers. Leave a comment. <laughs> this one looks like it had rising and falling targets. Did it? The old type, like we used to have, where you stand underneath yeah. it and haul the target up and then yeah. haul it down. Strensel Barracks was like that in the 90s, um, early 90s when I used to go there shooting. So this Close. square hole, yeah. in what is our ceiling, Yeah. there would have been a framework with r rails on and counterweights and the target would be able to be pulled down and then pushed back up so you could give them a limited exposure. We used to do this in the UK. Uh, and the person lowering and raising the target, obviously down here, is protected. Um, as the bullet passed through the, the, the paper, though, and the backing, mm. it didn't half make a crack. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and many a time, you could, if they'd clip the side of the frame, you could hear the ricochets, you know, just like in a cowboy movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was real stuff, because yeah, just, yeah. just a metre above there, there was from 5.56 to 50 cal rounds going past at high velocity. And Sometimes they'd hit the nails and the screws in the board, wouldn't they? Yeah. And it'd go crack and it'd blow a big corner of the board off. Yeah, that's right. Target board. Mm. And that's just up there. That's the that's the roof of the butts, uh, roof of the butts there. It is. Hmm. So this is, uh, the butts area. Oh, it looks like somebody's been down here doing some whatever, whatever they've been doing. They've got this all set up with a brazier and a chair. This is the cover that would have gone over that area where the target was rising and falling. That's looking down the range, which is really overgrown now. Uh, so yeah, it looks like somebody's been having a lovely time down here. Sitting down, chilling. I've even made myself a little makeshift table. So, you know what they say? Oh, look, yeah. Barbecue charcoal and beers so yeah, somebody's been having a whale of a time down here okay then yeah. come on in man join the party yeah so we've got um the flaps that could be pulled down to stop the rain getting in the butts i suppose We've totally got to have uh, we've totally got to get a picture here. Yeah. What was that material called again, Dave, that's on the top of the wall? Linotex. Linotex. And you can see where the rounds have been going a bit stray. 
because they've been very high. So we're just going to have a look in here. Got stuck. What have we got here then? Uh, yeah, it looks different this one. So we've got probably another box, but the design looks different. So we'll just check this out. Oh, it's open. Oh, this has got the rails in. still got the rails in, yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, yeah, the electrics are stripped out. But from Dortmund. Um, so these rails, right Dave, we'll set up at this one right. and you can explain what goes on here then. Okay, so in this framework you have clamps, you would put a target in, in a wooden button, and then tighten these clamps and clamp the target in place. Uh, you can have two targets, one on that side, one on that side. When they're both half and half, you can't see them from above. I'll just put my camera a bit down. See if it's still free, but I guess not. Yes, so you could go like that and raise the target for two seconds. One, that was one elephant, two elephant. And then pull the target down. And that way, they would, at the shooting end, they wouldn't know when the target was coming up. They'd be just watching. And as soon as the target popped up, like that, then they would have to engage the target. And then you pull the target back down. Yep. So you've got to be ready for watch and shoot, watch and watch shoot. Watch and shoot. Because the enemy ain't just going to stand there and wait for you to shoot them. They're going to move continuously. Now, yeah, so that's firing. And then you'd pull the target down and count the score on it. So they'd want to know their score. So you count up their score, which was a numbered target system. And then you would have communication with the end of the range. Here, there would have been a telephone. And you can telephone through to the firing point, what that target had got. So target three, 45 points, target one, 11 points, etc. And then what you would do, you would patch up the target. And what that means is the holes in the target, you have these stickers on a pad. Yeah, these stickers here. Big pads of stickers. And so you would put the sticker over the hole yeah. So they basically made the target a fresh target. So when they shot again, you could count up those shots. Indeed. Folks. So we're in this range now. And Dave's telling me the sand is still present, which is good. So it gives a good visual representation of what it was like when the range was open. Here we are. Indeed. So if we dug into that, which we probably won't because it'll take hours, but if you dug into it, like that beetle's done, um, you'll find... Exploring beetle. Exploring beetle, you'll find the rounds. Looks like someone started to dig it out here. I think that one's actually Ringo. Is it what? That's Ringo. Ringo bug? Beetle. Right. That's been a water leak that's washed the washed the sand away. Now that these aren't bullet holes that are in the well they're just like earthworms or something that's done that. So there'll be things living in there, so I won't disturb it. So this is the butts of a firing range with the sand complete. And this one the sand bank. These are the um, holes where you'd open this up. And then the target can come up from below on these rails that Dave was telling us about. The personnel, the personnel firing will be down there. Obviously, this is all overgrown. And they would fire through the target 
and the idea was the round went through the target and into the sand and stopped safely. And that is the principal fundamentals of the NATO firing range. So we're just leaving the range now. Slightly overgrown through this concrete safety room. Back through the woods. Back seat. It's like having a humpback with my uh, bergen on. And there's the edge of the, if the rounds went too wide, you could uh, stop them with that wall there, uh, stop the rounds going astray. Next week we are going to go to the range warden's house. We found this in the woods near the ranges. Okay. This was a large building with balconies and multi floors so make sure you subscribe to not miss out and i'll see you on thursday at 4 p.m uk time bye bye